Hi watch fans. Okay, video today is about my latest purchase which hasn't gone to plan. It was a risk. I bought this Belova Accutron, which is one of the most important watches ever produced. Maybe not this one, but the Accutron. The early ones are known as the fir world's first electronic watch. They have an incredibly sophisticated movement in them which uses a tuning fork and has two uh, coils of wire. Each coil packs 80 meters of wire which is about the third of a width of a hair and there's two of those coils. I don't know all the ins and outs of this. I've had a quick read up about it. The battery um, creates a power to the coils, the tuning fork vibrates at a certain rate and is interrupted by the coils on each direction giving the movement its accuracy. Um, it's more technical than that but that's kind of the basics of it. This one is a 1970, about 1970 I think. It's a gold, a very heavy gold plated um, there's a hallmark underneath the strap on between the lugs. I'll probably put a photo up on the video. Uh, 40 milligrams of plating. So it's one of the heaviest gold plating you can actually get. And the gold on this is superb. The strap itself, I don't think that has the same amount of plating on it. It's the original strap and that is showing some wear. But the watch itself, the gold is superb. It has a stainless steel back, a screw down back. Let's get some light onto this. So this came up for sale and they said it wasn't working. It may need a battery and of course oh, <laughs> it doesn't need a battery does it? There's obviously something else wrong with it. But I thought it's such a nice looking watch. I took a risk and I bought it. And once it arrived, I excitedly ordered the correct battery for it. And of course I put it in and it's not working. And I did try tapping the side. I'd read that if you tap the side, that can get the fork to start vibrating. And you can actually, um, when you tap the side, the fork vibrates and the second hand does move. So every time you tap it, the second hand moves, but it wasn't working with the battery it should hum along so there's something else going on there also there's an issue with the crown itself it was operating correctly but now it just pulls out and i've had the back off i've tried the screw which should hold it in place but it doesn't seem to be so something has gone on there i don't know if it's linked with the operation of it but now the crown even pushed in will still turn the hands like that, even when it's pushed right in. And if I pull that out, it just comes all the way out. So yeah, bit of a disaster. Um, it will be going back onto eBay, not just now. I'm gonna leave it a while till the pain subsides. And once I've forgotten about it a little bit, I will put it back on and hopefully someone with a lot more expertise than myself may be able to save it. I'll put a photo of the mechanism where I had the back off. On the video because it looks in really good nick but I've got no clue it was obviously pretty complicated which is a shame because it really is a lovely looking watch I really like it I'm not usually a big fan of gold watches but this this one really looks quite smart I quite like the fact it's got the original strap and the strap has got a little bit of patina and wear to it it, it tones it down slightly where the uh, case itself is still bright a bright kind of um, you can see the gold is a is a is a higher carrot just by the by the yellowness of it or the goldness of it I think you know what I mean if you've ever seen nine carat gold it looks a different color to higher carrots I think I believe this is 18 carat it's I'm not quite sure it's, it's American so there may be some different carrot plate into that but it's definitely fairly high carrot and it's very thick I think the thickest you can get is 50 microns um, you know, anything after that, you're talking solid gold. So this is 40 microns and it's definitely stood the test of time. You can see there's no missing gold whatsoever. 
so yeah, I mean, it's, it's all intense purposes. It's pretty much like a solid gold watch in looks anyway, apart from the strap. So unfortunately, it did. Have, it's got some marks to the glass as well. It's not unscathed. It's got some about three little chips, especially on the left hand side. I don't know if the light's picking that up. Interesting date. It's got. Um, is it Jew? Is that French? I'm not sure. It's got. It's not English on the date. So I don't know if it was meant for European market or what. It didn't come with this box, so this just came on its own. And the reason I bought it was because the first ever vintage watch I bought, I purchased, is the one I'm wearing here. This little Belova, 17 jewels, beautiful hand wind. I mean, look how thin that is. It's so thin. Beautiful timepiece. I was very lucky with that. This works perfectly. I put on a new NATO strap with it. And it is a small watch. I think, you know, it's actually under 30 millimeters, I think, across. So it's not a huge watch. It's very slim, but it is, I think it's still quite stylish. I like it. A little bit small for my wrist. But it, I hadn't heard of Belova until I found this and did a little bit of research. And now I quite like the brand. I haven't had luck with this, but I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for other Belovas. Um, they seem like a very nice quality watch and a lot of them are very stylish as well. So keep an eye out on eBay. I may well be listing this at some stage. I think I'm definitely going to um, lose some money on this. I paid too much. I don't even want to disclose what I paid for it because I'm a bit embarrassed with myself but hopefully I can get a fair chunk of it back because he was advertising it as not working. So I'll pretty much be doing the same thing. And I have actually cleaned it up. It was a bit grubby when it when I first got it. It's, it's cleaned up very nicely. Just a pity it doesn't work, but I'm not gonna pay a watch specialist to fix this. I think it would it would cost too much. This is this is for someone who can do it themselves. Then the labor's free. They may have to buy a new part if there's a hairspring or whatever's gone wrong on it. They may have to buy a new part. But if they can fit that themselves and if they can fit a new crystal, if they've got the um, tool to fit the crystal, then you really have got a smart looking, important, collectible watch with the original strap, which will have some value. So someone's gonna do all right out of this if they've got the necessary skills. I'd never even heard of a tuning fork electronic watch. Obviously we all know about um, quartz watches, but this predates those. This is the first electronic watch. And when they run, they don't, they pretty much, uh, the second hand goes round very smoothly, uh, like an oyster perpetual type situation rather than the usual quartz tick where the hand jolts every time, you know, as it goes round. This is a much smoother sweep. So it's a shame this isn't working, but I will keep an eye out for others. I would like an automatic really, but I like the brand. I've not been put off, it's, it's very nice quality. I have read that these are very, actually quite delicate and you really need to know what you're doing um, when you're servicing them. So I'm not surprised over the years something's happened and it's not the battery. But whoever gets this is a brand new battery and it is the correct one. Don't ask me what number it is now. Can't remember, but I uh, researched it and I made sure I got the right uh, Renauter, is it? Um, battery. So that's all, all correct but somebody's gonna to have to figure out what's going on with the crown, why that now won't um, fix in place properly. But it's probably something not too serious for someone who knows what they're doing. Hopefully it's not a total loss. But I'll be keeping hold of the very first vintage watch I bought, and I did do well on this one. It's very nice. This has got a bit of a scratch on the lens, but apart from from that, it's it's very nice condition. So I think I can recommend the Belova brand. If you are collecting watches, um, the early ones, you can pick them up 
at a reasonable price. Um, I mean, this one, I was very lucky. I think I paid £25 for this, uh, give or take a pound. I can't remember the exact figure. And I think I did very well with that. Um, there is an array of prices, but they, they don't go for ridiculous money. They're kind of in the same type of league as a TSO, I would guess. I would say they're probably a bit posher than Seiko. So if, if you want a good quality watch to collect that doesn't break the bank, Belova, I think, is a good place to start. And they do seem to hold their value. And there's some interesting, and obviously the Acutron is a very important and collectible watch. So even with this not working, it's going to have some value still where if it had been another watch, that would have probably been at end of end of any value whatsoever. But I'm hoping I can recover most of the money that I spent on it. Although I do find when I'm bidding for something, <laughs> I, I never manage to get it or I pay too much. But when you're selling, no one's really interested. So that's just life, isn't it, with, with eBay? But there you have it. Thank you very much for watching. And keep an eye um, on my channel. I will be carrying on looking out for other vintage watches. And if I find a decent deal, I will purchase it and see if I can do a video of it. Okay, guys, take care. Bye-bye.